we promised you a tour of our RV. That sounds weird to say, our RV. So that's what we're gonna be showing you here. A couple things we briefly mentioned when we were looking for our RV. Uh, we had some boxes that needed to be checked. I mean, everybody talks about having their check boxes for what they want. One of ours was it had to be a toy hauler. We had to be able to bring the bikes with us, which unfortunately we can't show you right now because it is way too cold to be on motorcycles up here. Uh, but the other, the other limitation we had was our pickup truck. Now it is a GM 2500 with a Duramax. So it does have a lot of towing capacity, but to get up to a fifth wheel travel trailer that is a toy hauler, not travel trailer, a fifth wheel toy hauler, we were gonna be over the limits. Uh, we would be close on some specs, but we would be over the gross vehicle weight of the truck. So and by the way, for those of you who don't know, fifth wheels are notoriously heavier. Yes. They are heavier. So that's why you'll see a lot of people lean toward pull behinds or travel trailers because their truck either can't handle the weight of a fifth wheel or they they like the the pull behind better so yep uh, it's a good option if your truck is not going to handle the weight of a fifth wheel and the other issue was our truck is paid for we did yes. not want another payment working toward debt free hard yes. yes when we hit the road at some point full time we want to hit full time with no debt yes so slowly working towards that so I'm going to hand the camera over and I'm going to walk us briefly around the outside. I guess we never did say what we got. We ended up with, and we'll kind of turn here, put it in the background. It is a torque made by Heartland. It is a model number 322 and it is one of their toy hauler models. And it has been great so far. We have loved this camper. Definitely some check boxes didn't get checked. Uh, but for the most part, it does everything we needed a camper to do for how we're going to use a camper. And the other major thing is it got us on the road today and not down the road. And we're still sitting at home not camping. So here we go. Storage was kind of at a minimum on this camper. There's a light in here somewhere. You don't have a full pass through. And it's full of junk right now. But... On the other side of this is the, where the generator would go. This camper, just like most uh, toy haulers, does come with full generator prep and you can get it with the generator. This model, when we bought it, just did not have the generator, which actually worked for us because we didn't need it. You've got heater, water heater on this side. And I will say one thing, that I don't like this design, but I know a lot of the water heaters go this way. The switch for electric is on the outside and it's not on the main panel inside. It's kind of a pain. Our last camper had both the electric and LP switches inside the camper so you could choose which one you wanted. All right, and coming around, the next thing we really love is the outside kitchen. Got the uh, beer fridge filled with Gatorade right now something you'll learn a little bit later. Lisa and I are both keto, so the beer fridge doesn't get to be filled with exactly what I want right now. The kitchen is nice. I will say one problem with the kitchen, it's too tall. You'd have to have a step stool to use the kitchen. Here. Tell them how tall you are. I am 6'2", and you see I would be cooking like this and using this. Lisa, cannot use this kitchen. Five, two and three quarters on a tall day. Yeah. So anyways, but it is nice. The TV's nice. We have used that a couple times. Something to note, if you do come to Vogel State Park, there is no cable. There is no Wi-Fi. There is no cell phone signal. You are all by yourself out here. We love that. I know some people probably don't. Another thing I find odd about this camper is your water connections are on what I call the living side where you would be hanging out. So we've not been running with our water hooked up. 
because we've been getting down below 32 at night, down in the 20s, and we've had to have the water disconnected. So we've been running off of our fresh water tank. We've been trying to figure out how long can we go on the fresh water tank. And we're trying to figure out how many days can we get on our black water tanks and our gray water tanks, but that's a conversation for another time. Oh, and the ramp, if you've got older dogs who have trouble getting in and out of the camper, our dog loves this ramp. It, it does a great job of getting him in and out of the camper. And now we'll head around here to the back. Being a toy hauler, it does have the uh, doors. And if it was a little bit warmer, we would have that pulled down and it does have the back deck system on it. So in warmer weather, we are out here on the back deck. The other thing we've got, it can't come, comes with a ladder to get on top. Fuel station. It's got a 30 gallon tank that uh, supplies both the generator if you have one or you use it for filling up your toys. We haven't used it yet, but that will get used at some point. And your electrical hookup, satellite cable, if the campground was uh, wired for that. Now I will show, I'm gonna grab the camera here. I do wanna show you one thing. We talked about check boxes. This is one of the things that for me was a negative, but unless we're in a situation like we are t today where we have no sewage hookups and I have to use a dump tank, this is the only time this becomes a problem. And I'm gonna show you down here that our sewage connection is under the slide. You see my dump tank there. Now that is the main part of the camper, both black and gray water. We do have a second bath in the garage and right there is the dump tank for the back tank and they do both gray and black water in the same tank. But I've already had to dump gray water once and it is a pain crawling under that slide. So definitely a checkbox that uh, got missed. All right, and as I mentioned, generator prep. If we had a generator, it would be in here, but it's already got all the wires and the fuel run, uh, would be easy to add a generator. We may do that at some point. The other thing I wanted to show is this unit comes with two 30 pound LP tanks, dual batteries, and if you notice I got a cage by the batteryshackle.com. The place where we store our batteries, our, our, our camper, we came to pick it up one day and the batteries were gone. Somebody else decided they needed them more than we did. So I replaced the batteries and I've got them shackled in a cage and haven't had any more trouble. All right, that's the outside. Let's go take a look at the hey inside. Everybody, let's go inside. Up, oh. Mason. All right. So you see, as in most toy haulers, we have one big room. One of the things that has blown us away about this unit that we haven't seen in any of the high-end units that we've looked at is this shelf right here. We love this shelf. As you can see, it's the coffee station. It's where the Instant Pot lives until we're gonna use it. We have a lot of our keto supplies up here. Um, it, it allows us the space to have really luxurious items like our air fryer which we use all the time and um, of course you can see that it has a three burner stove and have we used the oven yet yes i can't yes I can't even remember if we have so i'm trying to remember i think it was the family fulfillment project that I learned a secret to RV ovens because we lived for years camping in our last camper with burnt camper cookies, burnt anything you put in the oven. And one of the things that we learned was if you place a pizza stone right here underneath the rack, 
but above the but burner. But above the burner, it will help to regulate the temperature in the oven, and you will no longer have burnt camper cookies. So that was a pretty big breakthrough when I found out about that. So thank you, Family Fulfillment Project. I think I think it was you guys that I learned that from. Uh, it's even been a couple of years ago, but check them out. That they have some really great information. Okay, so it has a large farmhouse sink, and um, one of my favorite things about this kitchen, by the way, the fridge is over here. There's a great little storage compartment up here. Um, it's not a huge fridge, but it works for us. One of my favorite things in this kitchen is that it does have a massive pantry. Now, as you can see from all of our junk here, we don't use it for food. Most of our food goes in the fridge or in the cabinets, but it's wonderful. I keep my, my purse in here, my um, hair um, products, my hair dryer, all in, usually in containers just to keep them from sliding around and it gives us a little more height because those are large shelves. Um, we do have a four-person sofa, which it's usually just Jerry and I using it. But when our kids are with us, they all recline. Um, we have to pull out more blankets when they're here. But, um, in fact, our daughter is joining us tonight, so we're really excited that she's coming. We have two kids, by the way, Andy and Emily. Uh, they are in their early 20s. Uh, Andy is in the Air Force and Emily works and lives in South Carolina and um, we're in Georgia by the way. We are from the north side of Atlanta. Um, we love the slide. It's a single slide unit so it's a big one and as you can see this tree right here we're really close friends with him. It was very scary letting the slide out. <laughs> but we got it in. We did. <laughs> We're in. We did. It was very scary. Lots of interesting lighting. You can see there's like backlit lighting going on up here. And there's some under the sofa as well. I'm not sure what purpose that's supposed to serve. You can see your toes better as you walk through at night if you have it turned on. We leave them off most of the time. So let's head to the bedroom. Again, another box not fully checked for us. Yeah, we made some sacrifices on this bedroom. It's very small for what we had in mind. And we would have loved to have had a slide in the bedroom but that wasn't possible because of our weight issues with the truck. Um, we really wanted to stay within a safe range. It's so much better to be, sorry, Mason's talking. It's so much better to be on the cautious side where your gross vehicle weight is. Um, and so this was one of the places that we had to cut corners. So there's no slide in here, which means that our storage and our space is very limited. On top of that, it's not laid out incredibly well. As you can see up here, we have a basket, like a cloth basket, and then we have cubes, which I labeled on the outside so that when I'm packing, I pull, because remember, we're not full time. We're in and out of this thing all the time. So it's just easier to set up the cubes, look at the labels on the outside of the cubes, put those items into the cubes, and then they just slide into place. And there are cubes all the way across. I think there's five cubes and then one basket, just because I'm shorter and it's easier for me to get that in and out than it is the cubes. So we have hanging storage on both sides and there is a little drawer here. This is a king size bed. I will say the mattress is not great and it will be something that probably in the spring we will upgrade. 
but for now we're getting by with it I can tell every time we sleep on it it gets a little bit flatter so it's not gonna hang in there very much longer with us but um, you know we have a fantastic bed at home and so we can make this work while we're out in it let's take a look in the bathroom oh by the way let me show you what happens when you put the slide in when you put the slide in with the door open it's a bad idea don't do that fellas because and i did this jerry did not do this i did this this is where the doorknob hits and it almost cracked the door in two by the time i figured out what happened so check your hot spots on your slides to make sure that there's nothing that's going to be in the way i was around the corner and could not see that the door was open and i didn't know enough yet to know to even check for it so heads up on that that was a hard lesson learned so here we have a smallish bathroom but it works beautifully for us um it of course is not a one piece shower but we have figured out some workarounds to help it work a little bit better we did replace the shower head and um on our list of things to upgrade is definitely the faucet you have to know when you're gonna <laughs> When you're going to buy an RV, the faucets that they put in are so short that it's, it's almost impossible to use them. You have to get very creative with them. So other than that, though, it's a fully functional bathroom for us. Um, it will get us by to the next rig, and it gets us out there. So there you have it. Get Mason. Mason is a 10 year old Springer Spaniel. We call him Mason the Wonder Dog. And he is the reason for the ramp on the outside. Yes. Yes. <laughs> He's our buddy. Okay, back to the garage. So it's a little bit messy back here because we have Mason's bed and all of our stuff back here in the corner. Um, this is one of our favorite areas. It functions so well for us. One of one of my favorite ways that we use this is in the mornings. Jay is a much later sleeper than I am. I'm always up super early. I can come in to the kitchen, um, make my coffee or tea or whatever I'm going to have. And then I come back here and sit and get to have the lights on and listen to music if I want to and it does not bother him in the least little bit. So that is definitely something in a toy hauler that I had never considered before or thought that that would be useful. Also, I love the fact that we can take both our bikes with us when we go places and Vogel State Park happens to be in a wonderful motorcycle riding area. So to have those um, in the, the last time we came, I think was in April, April, late April. and it was perfect riding weather. It's not now. Um, we would probably die of hypothermia <laughs> if we tried to ride right now. It's very cold outside, but in fact, it snowed on us. We may be able to put some footage in of the snow later, but um, yeah, it's, it is a wonderfully useful space and I don't know that I could go back now. So um, up above, you'll see the bed where our daughter is gonna sleep tonight and we still have access to our table and sofas on each side. This is where I like to eat and um, yeah, it's a great space. We absolutely love it. I wouldn't trade it. Um, in fact, the the next RV that we have will probably be a toy hauler, depending on what happens between now and, you know, however many years from now it is when we upgrade again. We tend to keep our campers for a long time, and um, 
you know, it works well for us. So for now, that's the plan. Also, there is a tiny, tiny half bath back here for any of our visitors to use. And there is one large cabinet to keep, you know, toilet paper and towels and stuff like that. There is no second shower, but... It does have a fan. It does have a fan in it. And it works well, uh, especially when we're on the road, we're traveling, and a potty emergency happens, because sometimes they do, and it's great to be able to jump in this back door, and you have access to the bathroom. And that was one of our check, check, box, check box items, I can't speak, is when we travel, and we pull off on the side of the road, pull off in a Walmart or something for lunch, we wanted access to a bathroom. With the slide in, we cannot get to the front bathroom. It's blocked, as you might have figured out from the door incident. Uh, but we can get to the refrigerator. We have to cl climb over the counter, but we can get to it, and it is accessible without opening the slide up. So the ability to use the camper when we travel to stop for lunch, use our own restroom, was a huge check checkbox for us. And this camper did it for us. Yeah. We've looked at a lot of some of the fifth wheels we've been looking at for our future, that we like the floor plan, we like the layout. You can't access the refrigerator, and unless they have a rear bathroom, a second second bath, you can't access the main bathroom. Uh, so those were all, all, all issues for us in looking for the next camper. And it was an issue for this one. It had to check off those boxes. One, one last thing that I love about this area specifically is what we refer to as the attic. There is a ton of space up here, a ton of space. Now, you'll also see our step ladder that I have to use in order to access this area at all. Um, the other really funny thing is trying is seeing me trying to use the outside kitchen because I can reach the fridge, I cannot reach the sink, I cannot reach the grill. So, I mean, that's kind of a thumbs down. Yeah. But this is where Jerry hides all of his cookies. Yes. And, um, I mean, it's just a great storage area. As long as you have that step stool, um, it works great for us. Yeah. And I will say, this is something that Heartland has done a great job of. This model, and I think there's several other models of their toy haulers, the Torque line. Um, I know they've got a couple other lines of travel trailer toy haulers. Is they're trying to compete with the fifth wheel market in the height of the travel trailer. Because you'll notice how tall the ceilings are in here. You typically don't get that in a travel trailer but they're trying to make it feel like you're in a fifth wheel with the height of the ceiling. Unfortunately, that also makes it so if you are vertically challenged, getting to the upper cabinets can be a little difficult and you need the step stool. Own it. Vertically challenged. All right. Well, I think that wraps it up. Yep. I can't think of anything else. Yep. It was fun showing you guys around. Y'all have a great day. Bye. Hey guys, thank you so much for coming along on this journey with us. We're excited to have you. We're excited about the future and what these videos mean for us and our RV adventures. If you like what you see, hit that subscribe button and don't forget to ring the bell and you'll be notified when we drop more videos. Yeah.